So, so far that's working exactly the way that we want it. Now, because this is a tank, obviously we should be able to rotate its gun turret independently of the tank. So let's go ahead and set that up, which is pretty simple. We'll just move back into our gun actor by double clicking on it. And we want to set up some rules which basically tell the gun to rotate in a certain angle. So we'll click create rule. And we're going to switch this second drop down here over to key again because we want to choose a key that will rotate the gun turret. And a good key that's kind of good for my hand positioning on the keyboard is the letter A. So I'll just type in the letter A. And when we press the letter A, we want to go ahead and rotate that gun turret counterclockwise. I'll duplicate this whole rule and I'll type in the letter S and we'll have it rotate clockwise. So when I press A, rotate the gun turret to the left or counterclockwise and when I push S, rotate it to the right or clockwise and let's see what that looks like. So the letter A and the letter S. So that means that I should be able to rotate the tank and it's going to rotate the gun turret along with it. But I can also rotate the gun turret and then rotate the tank. So we can now rotate these two independently of each other. So the nice thing is if I wanted to create a pretty dynamic battle scene here is I can drive my tank around but then I can actually drive and rotate my gun turret at a different rate than my tank. So we can drive and fire at enemies at the same time. So the last thing we need to do is actually set up the spawning of the bullet actor when we fire. So let's jump back into our editors here and we want to click on the attribute. We're going to create one more attribute here. And we're going to, again, make this a text-based attribute. Click Choose. I'm going to type in the word Fire. For default, I'm going to click None. And we will jump back into our background actor. We're going to create a new rule. We'll just name this right away and we'll call this rule Fire. And when we press the key, again, I'll click on my keyboard here, and I'll click the space bar for fire. What we want to do when we press the space bar is change an attribute. And the attribute we want to change is, of course, the attribute that we just created called fire. And by default, that's set to none. So what we want to do is switch this over to fire. So we'll close that down and we'll jump back into our gun actor, minimize this, and let's create a rule. We'll take this first pull down and switch that to attribute. So when attribute fire is changed from none over to the word fire, we want to spawn an actor. So we're going to go down into our behavior list here and drag spawn actor and it's already set to the actor that we want which is ammo we can choose any of these actors but we will choose our ammo actor and let's preview that so when we press the space bar you see right here on top of the tank we get that ammo and if I were to actually push that again and again and again we're actually spawning multiple bullet actors but that's not very exciting. We need our bullet to be moving at a high rate of speed out of the gun. So let's go and jump into the ammo actor right here at the top. Double click on that. And we want to grab the move behavior and put that in the direction of the gun, which is 90 degrees at the moment. And I'll put that um, the speed down to something really slow, like 30, so we can see what's going on here. So again, if I push the space bar, that will change the attribute fire over to fire, and the gun knows that when that attribute is switched to fire, to spawn the bullet actor, and let's see what happens. 
So you can see the bullet actor spawns. And it's doing exactly what we want it to. So for instance, if I were to rotate my tank and spawn the actor again, actually we need to reset that. If I were to rotate the tank and spawn the actor again, you can see that the actor is going to spawn and move in the direction that the tank is facing, which is exactly what we want. But two things are a problem here. We need to switch that otherwise. So we'll go back into the gun, or I'm sorry, into the uh, the grass actor. And we need to open up the otherwise. And when set that back to none. So just like we did with the turning and the driving that we didn't want it to be set infinitely to that value, we open up otherwise so we can switch this back to none. That way when we let go of the space bar that attribute switches back to none so it's not just stuck on fire forever. So if we hit preview we should be able to press space bar multiple times to get multiple bullets coming out of our gun. Now, other than the fact that these bullets are moving way too slow, you can see another problem here, which is the bullets are spawning out of the center of the gun. So what we want to do is create an offset for that. And a nice feature that we have in the spawn behavior is the ability to offset it. So let's jump back into the gun actor, which is where we set up our spawn behavior. And you'll notice that there is an, a position offset relative to the actor. So let's just try about 100 pixels in the Y position and that was actually a pretty good guess. It's still a little bit on top of the gun but we want it to appear like it's coming right out of the tip of the gun. So probably something a little bit past the tip of the gun uh, would be good. Let's do about 115 pixels and let's preview this. Yep, that looks perfect. Just at the very tip of the gun is where we're spawning it. And now we can go back into our ammo and speed this up quite a bit. So speed, instead of 30, let's do something like 600. Preview that. And that looks much more appropriate. So we now have the ability to drive our tank all over our scene, fire, back our tank up, rotate our gun turrets in different directions, and fire some bullets at some enemies. So the last thing to do here in this setup is to jump back into our scene and delete these actors, our little text attribute actors that we don't need anymore because we have everything set up properly. And I recommend do not leave actors sitting around that you're not using. So I'm going to delete these from my actor bin here. This would be a great time to once again go ahead and save a version of this. So I'll do 1.4 at this point. And once you have everything set up, I can't hesitate the importance of going into each one of these actors and naming all of these things. You really should be doing that as you go along, but I didn't do it during this tutorial because I didn't want to take up more time than is necessary. But when you're creating these things, take the time to name them. That way you don't just see rule, 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 rule stacked on top of each other and you actually know what you're working with and you can just jump into the ones that you want to edit right away.